So what we're talking about tonight is a, really kind of a, a meditation practice that's intended to cultivate compassion. And so uh, this whole series that we're doing revolves around a couple of things, and, and one of them is working with kind of the way our thoughts create suffering, and another is a series of meditation practices where you cultivate these mental states called the Brahma Viharas, which means divine abodes. Um, and basically, these are, the, these are the highest states that you can live in, in terms of mental states. And so they start with metta. Metta is a Pali word, usually translated goodwill or loving kindness. It's basically the desire for uh, oneself and others to be happy. And um, so if you think about metta as kind of a view, the idea that happiness is good for me, uh, if I like happiness, you probably like happiness too, so happiness is also good for you. So then you can kind of go from having this view to having kind of an intention that, um, that you'll help others be happy and free from suffering. And so when we get into this intention to help others be free from suffering or intention to want others to be free from suffering, we call that compassion. And uh, the, the Pali word for that is karuna, which uh, I mentioned that because uh, some, some people are reading a, a book about this right now, and, and it's referred to that way. So, um, so basically, I believe that happiness is good for myself and for all beings. And therefore, I'm going to help others be free from suffering. So to cultivate that intention, we're going to do a meditation that's very specifically designed to accomplish that. And it's a Tibetan practice called Tonglen, which basically means sending and receiving. So the idea is that we make ourselves willing to take on the suffering of others, to receive the suffering of others, and then exchange it for freedom from suffering, for relief of some kind. So this is a little counterintuitive at first. Usually, it, you know, we don't want to suffer, and if we encounter someone who's suffering, you know, we don't really want to take that on, right? But um, if, if, if you find somebody who's depressed, you don't want to be depressed. Uh, or if you find someone who's anxious, you don't want to be anxious. But in this particular case, we're actually going to breathe in these, what we'd normally think of as a negative emotion, as a stressful emotion, and, and breathe out peaceful emotions. And usually you think, no, no, I, I want to send out the bad stuff and breathe in the good stuff. But as you work with this, you'll see why we do it this way. By taking on somebody's depression, for example, you don't make yourself depressed. You're accepting that this kind of suffering exists. You accept that you experience this kind of suffering. So you identify uh, with it in, when you see it in others. And then um, you use this, your heart of compassion really to transcend this uh, with others and with yourself at the same time. So there's a process in meditation that we do this with. We, and think in terms of concentric circles. When we do loving kindness, we think first of, you know, I, I want to be happy. So we think of ourselves at the center of this circle. May I be happy? And then we expand out to a loved one. May, our, may my loved one be happy? And then a friend. And then an acquaintance, someone kind of neutral. And then somebody we're having conflict with, if we're having conflict with someone. And then finally all beings. So we're sort of expanding out our wish for happiness in broader and broader circles. So we do the same thing with Tonglen. Uh, and if you, if, you kind of, if you ever decide to study this in sort of the traditional ways it's taught, you'll find a, a couple of different approaches. And one instruction will say, you begin the sending and receiving process with yourself. And that's constructive, because if we recognize uh, our own desire to be free from suffering, and we recognize the kind of suffering we experience, then we're more likely to recognize that when we see it in others, and to be able to identify with it, know what it feels like for them to suffer. So the Buddha, that said some really specific things when he talked about suffering. 
uh, first of all, the, the, the word that the Buddha used was dukkha, which is a little bit more comprehensive than what we usually think of when we think suffering. It includes all kinds of stuff. So for one thing, there's sort of the suffering of suffering. There's birth, which is painful, death, uh, growing old, growing sick, those things you're going to experience no matter what. If you're born into a human body, you're going to experience those things. And then they're suffering from circumstances. So being separated from things that you like and people that you like. Being in situations or around people that you don't like. That's suffering also. So in a nutshell, the Buddha said, the five aggregates, and that's a whole other conversation that we'll have on another day. But basically, life contains the seed of suffering. So, uh, circumstances and situations arise, adversities and difficulties arise. But <clears throat> the degree to which <clears throat> we experience stress and suffering happens, uh, occurs largely as a result of the way our mind engages with these things when they happen. So when we do Tonglen, when we do this meditation we're going to do, we notice the situations that cause stress, that cause suffering. We accept them, and then we work with compassion to abandon them. So you might, during the course of a meditation, suddenly realize that this body is subject to aging, <clears throat> which I know some of you are in your 20s and you don't believe this yet, but it's true. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so accepting that the body is subject to aging. You can abandon the ways you create suffering about that so that you can enjoy the present, uh, the present moment. And in the meantime, compassionately accept yourself with your stress about that. Body subject to disease, so accepting that, you can abandon the ways you make your mind sick. And in the meantime, accept yourself with your suffering. So this is a part of this process with this meditation, is to accept that you suffer and accept yourself with that. Because a lot of times we, we don't just want to reject the suffering. We kind of want to reject ourselves for experiencing it. So um, <clears throat> then you work with this with yourself. You recognize the suffering that arises. You accept what's going on. And then we move on to others. So this is kind of another instruction that you'll encounter. Sometimes to say start with someone that you want to help. Um, and this is kind of a good way to work with it too. If you see somebody who's suffering and compassion arises naturally in your heart because of that, then start with that person. Okay. Um, <clears throat> because you'll, for example, you know, if there's one of these tragedies, a tidal wave, or earthquakes, and things like that, a lot of times people will feel this arising in their hearts sort of naturally wanting to help and not really know what to do with that. Well, use that compassion now. Accept, you know, recognize that this kind of suffering happens and recognize that this kind of suffering happens to yourself also, maybe in different degrees. But we all experience these same kind of stresses. So yourself, a loved one, a friend, an acquaintance, your adversaries, all beings experience these kinds of stresses. So um, as you're thinking about yourself, you'll think about things like anger. So as you do this meditation, you'll recognize that anger has, is rising in your heart. And so you'll breathe in your anger, angry feelings and breathe Breathe them into your, basically into the center of your chest, into your heart center. It's not the, not the heart that pumps blood, but that kind of center that you associate with, uh, with your emotions. And then you transform that into freedom from anger. So now when you encounter it with other people <clears throat> in the meditation, you can take on their anger too. So you, you identify with it. I recognize <clears throat> that I get angry. I recognize that that's stressful. I can accept it. I can transform it. <clears throat> so <clears throat> one of the things that we do as we work with this is um, <clears throat> we notice when we get upset about being upset, for example. So when, you, when you're doing this and, and 
maybe we get to the part where you're sending uh, this wish for freedom from suffering to an adversary and you start thinking, oh, I don't want them to be from, free from suffering. I want them to suffer. I don't like them, right? <laughs> then the, the next thing, if you're practicing Buddhism, is to go, oh, I shouldn't feel that way. And so now you're kind of pushing that away from yourself. So use that as an opportunity to wake up a little bit. Okay, I'm born a human being um, with this particular karma that leads to that kind of emotional experience. And so accept yourself with that and then start to you know, turn that compassion onto, uh, onto that mechanism in yourself. And then when you say anger in someone else, it makes it a little bit easier for you to accept it with them. When you're aware of someone that you want to help, like if there's a catastrophe in the news or you think about you know, war and the people that live in war zones and things like that, then take that that arises and <clears throat> you can think of something like, look, this person's been reduced to misery. And that could be me. Or that could be my friend. That could be my loved one. That could be my adversary. And then wish them free from suffering. So imagine that you breathe in that person's loneliness or their grief or their fear or whatever and transform it and send out freedom. I'm going to guide you through this meditation so you don't have to remember any of this. Um, <clears throat> don't get caught up in problem solving. This is kind of one of the roadblocks that we hit when we try to practice this sometimes, is you'll be thinking, may this person be free from suffering. And then you'll start thinking, well, what can I do? How can I do that? How, can they ever be free from suffering? This situation is terrible. Don't worry about that. Don't try to solve the problem. Your job <clears throat> during that 20 minutes that we're going to meditate really is to open up your heart to compassion, to open up your heart to recognizing suffering when you see it and reacting to it compassionately. There's another roadblock, which is this sense of not wanting to take on someone else's stress. The thing is, you're getting it anyway. If somebody's angry and they're sending out negative vibes, to try to push it away just creates more stress. It's coming your way anyway, so take it, accept it, transform it, react to it differently. This is a really very powerful way to meditate. Um, and some, a lot of the regulars have heard this story before, but I got a whole new crowd, so. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was, I first started working with this after um, uh, Michelle and I had moved to Deland, and um, I was having some anger issues. I'd gone through some a tough time, and, and so I was, I was dealing with the aftermath of some things, and I'd gotten back to regular meditation practice, and I decided I was going to really work on this and turn it on my anger. And um, so uh, one day, Michelle and, well, Michelle, we, we would go to some place like Walmart or something. When we got ready to check out, Michelle would make me wait outside. Because she knew that if, some, if the person, if the clerk was rude to us or something, I was going to react really badly to that. I used to manage retail stores, and the fact that I couldn't fire that person just drove me crazy. So, so we'd get ready to check out. She'd go, wait out front, I'll be out there in a little bit. <laughs> So one day, we're running around doing a bunch of errands and stuff. We were getting ready for some event, <clears throat> and, um, and we go to Popeye's. We realized we hadn't eaten anything, so we stopped into Popeye's. And I go up to the counter, and a guy comes up, and a guy <laughs> probably mid-50s or so, and he says, yeah, what do you want? And I said, uh, two-piece spicy white meat with fries. And he looks at me like I just said the dumbest thing he'd ever heard in his life. He goes, you want a number three. How do you expect me to get your order right if you order it like that? And I felt the blood <laughs> begin to rise, you know, to boil. And then all of a sudden, I see this guy and the suffering he's going through. You know, the, his feet hurt. And he's, you know, has to work at Popeye's and he's 50 years old. And, it, you know, and he's got to deal with idiots like me coming in and ordering like two-piece spicy white meat with fries instead of a number three and all these things you know all this suffering is coming up off of him 
And so I just breathe it in. It's like, okay, I take it in. And I s start sending back, you know, this sort of white light, right? This uh, freedom from stress. And my stress went away. My anger went away. And I just said, yeah, okay, I'll take a number three, thanks. And Michelle, I thought she was going to faint. <laughs> but, you know, things like that happen when you start practicing with this. You realize, look, I can take what's coming and I can respond to it differently. And when I do that, I'm going to feel differently. And the way I'm going to feel is different in really good ways. So I encourage you to, uh, to work with this.